herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. On the corner of Saturday Market, and we're talking to our friend Salmon, our friend Salmonberry. Howdy. Uh, Salmonberry is the artist that uh, drew our uh, draw, drew the logo for the Emerald Empire Hemp Fest, the rising phoenix out of the ashes. It's quite a story behind that whole image and and how it came to be. Uh, even uh, you paint you you came up with it, and Absolutely. then it came to be a year later. Uh, yeah, right, right, we that's up, true, yeah. We ended up having problems and came out of the ashes and we came back, yeah. and it was so right. apropos. It's a very special meaning for our, our uh, history, but... Yeah. Uh, and then a year later, or two years later, you did a poster for us, and so... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, we appreciate Sam and Barry quite a... Thanks, uh, man. Uh, quite an artist. Uh, his Volkswagen is something to uh, admire in itself, <laughs> the old bus. Oh, yeah, the bus. Yeah, I wish it was here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A good one. And so, uh, well, how's it going for you, uh, Sam and Barry? Good, man. Good. Been on the road. Was just down in California and uh -huh. went to Hawaii this winter. And oh. life is good, man. Oh man, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how about cannabis? Cannabis is still in your life? Oh, absolutely, man. <laughs> All right. Oh, you know, or you mean Pakalolo in Hawaii? Paka Pakalolo. Yeah, right? Pakalolo. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I always heard That's what the Hawaiians call it. <laughs> yeah, I always heard that marijuana is a slang, Mexican slang word. And so I asked a Mexican right. one time. I said. Well, what do you call pot? And I expected him to hear marijuana. Right, right. Yeah, he said mota. Oh, yeah, mota, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I, what? I never heard that before. Oh, so, yeah. Absolutely, mota. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, do. I just I just got my card, my medical card recently. Uh -huh. That's cool, because I have All right. hurt knees and stuff. But. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. My okay. name's J.D. by the way. Oh, good to meet you, man. Thank you very much for... Oh, yeah. Yeah, things are looking a whole bunch different here on the cannabis thing. Uh, I've been in Actors for 14 years, and I've right. never seen it look so good. Right, absolutely. Uh, yeah, California yeah. has an initiative on the ballot that has a pretty fair chance of passing. Yeah, what do you think? How's that going to change things? Like for the growers in Northern California and stuff? And well, I, when I hear it, it's already changing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've heard... Sure, yeah. I, yeah, I've heard... I'm hearing that the uh, the people in Humboldt are really worried because right. they can't move the crop. They're not right, selling they're worried it. about it. Yeah, why turn it into like the Napa Valley, like for wine only? You know, it's yeah, for yeah, for uh, uh, so I, I, so I, I don't cool. know. I, you know, it's a good question. What yeah. it'll be like? It's kind of hard to. You know, it's like trying to see the future, but right. Exactly. I've always, yeah. I've always felt that. Yeah. I, 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 we've always heard that growers and dealers don't want to legalize because they make too much money. Right. I my feeling is I don't know if they feel that way or not because I never interviewed them. But right, right, right. But yeah, I, I think that uh, personally, I think that the price will go down, but it'll but the quantity will go up. Therefore, yeah. they won't lose any money. Yeah. And I tell people just because you can grow vegetables, yeah. how many how many vegetables do you grow that you eat? You know. Right, right. So right. just because you can do it doesn't mean you're going to. And how well can you grow them too? Exactly. Yeah. And what always, kind of quality you're going to get. Yeah, exactly. And, and like you said, Napa Valley, there's always going to be a, yeah. a extra strain that you're yeah, going to yeah. want to pay a lecture for. Yeah. They're going to have they're going to have the Kmart brand strand right. if you want to pay the lower price. And, yeah. You know, some of my friends. For buck, whatever. Well, yeah. Some of my friends from up there were talking about starting little bed and breakfasts where you can come and stay and then try different uh, strains and stuff like that. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. it'd be like so yeah. they're tapping into the tourist industry if it passes. You Definitely. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think it'll all be good. Of course, yeah. the naysayers are talking about we're going to have more impaired drivers on the road. But ah, uh, personally, I, I'd rather have a toker on the road than a drunk. So, oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, <laughs> rolling up and hit the road, man. Yeah, That's right. What I'm talking about. So yeah, check out. Let's see, salmonberry.com. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah salmonberry with one R. Oh, with two no, R. Uh, salmonberry with two R's, no two R. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah. Salmonberry with no L and two R's. So <laughs> salmonberry.com and check out the website. And we appreciate Thanks, it. Good talking yeah. to you. Sweet. Thanks, See you man. next time. You bet. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Sweet. And now a message from the American Marijuana Growers Association. Hi. I'm a farmer and I work hard every day to grow high-quality marijuana, the biggest cash crop in these United States. I'd like to thank you for your support of U.S. marijuana policy. Because marijuana is illegal, I don't have to pay taxes. 
Even better, prohibition leads to artificially inflated prices, which means a better quality of life for me and my family. As long as I don't get caught. Just as importantly, your tax dollars support thousands of U.S. agents who work tirelessly to keep low-grade foreign marijuana out of our country. So thank you, America. And remember, whether you're nauseated from chemotherapy or just in the mood for a nice, cool buzz, choose the best pot in the world, American Homegrown. This morning on today's woman's so-called stiletto stoners, educated, career-minded women who regularly smoke marijuana. The topic is highlighted in a recent article in Marie Claire, and here is one woman's story we should point out that she asked us to disguise her identity. I am a book editor. I've worked in publishing for several years now. I often smoke pot when I get home from work. The stereotypical pothead depicted by Hollywood. This is it, man. This is what your grandchildren are going to be smoking. The jobless, loveless slacker. This weed is fantastic. Is not the only type of person getting stoned. Educated, career-minded, successful women like this 30-something admitted pot smoker are also lighting up. I look at it as just sort of a way to unwind and just relax and sort of decompress. According to a recent study, 8 million women in America smoke marijuana in the past year. For me, it's the equivalent of having a glass of wine at the end of a long day. An illegal habit she's keeping private. At my current job, no one knows that I smoke. My family does know. It's obviously not something that they're super happy about. But on the other hand, I have a career. In one month, she'll spend roughly two or three hundred dollars for approximately half an ounce. And even though it's against the law, she's neither worried about getting caught nor becoming addicted. I don't walk down the sidewalk blazing joints. I don't sit in the park next to moms with kids and smoke. I, I'm not worried about addiction. I feel like I'm more addicted to coffee than anything else. And I'm sure millions of people can say the same. The changing face of pot smokers. But you're so smart and so together and so organized and you're always on time. And I'm like, yes, I am all of those things and I do smoke pot. It's not impossible. Joanna Coles is the editor-in-chief of Marie Claire. Dr. Julie Holland is a psychiatrist at the New York University School of Medicine and the author of Weekends at Bellevue, nine years on the night shift at the Psych ER. Good morning to both of you. Nice Good to morning, see you. Good How morning. did this hit your radar? Well, really, we were hearing from a lot of readers that they were feeling very stressed. I mean, clearly the economy is a, a great source of stress for people, and they wanted a way to unwind. And they found more and more of them were doing this, and they found it had less impact on them when they were going to work the next morning. So they didn't want to drink. Uh, it's cheap. And they felt they could do it in the privacy of their own home, and it was a very effective way to come down. That eight million number you, we, we quoted in the piece, that does not include teenagers who are experimenting with marijuana. You're talking about the 18 to 49 year olds. We're talking about highly functioning women who, you, you know, these are not people who are lying on park benches, the typical picture of someone who's addicted to drugs. They're casual recreational users who find it very effective. Th this comment that we just heard in the piece where it's, it's just, I use it instead of having a glass of wine after work. How do you feel about that? Is it the same thing other than the fact that it's illegal? Well, the fact that it's illegal is a very big deal. You know, people have to hide and they feel like criminals and there's a lot of shame and guilt. It ends up making, uh, you know, it decreases self-esteem a little bit and it makes it more adrenalized. You know, the fact that you add adrenaline into it that you have to hide and there's shame actually can make it feel more addictive. It can make it more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, so I have to say that's not what we're hearing from readers. I mean, first of all, it's decriminalized in 13 states. And I don't think this is a generation of people who get excited about the fact it's illegal. I think they try to in college and they're going back to something because these are times of real stress and I don't think they're excited by the fact it's illegal and honestly it's not very difficult to get that's the other thing right. well, one, we would talk to people who had dealers in their offices one woman in your piece said that it's like her bubble bath uh, right and but but it, when you make comments like that and I think what I was getting at with you doctor when you say equate it to a glass of wine are you ignoring a darker side of this issue well, it is a drug, like alcohol is a drug, or like coffee, caffeine, cigarettes. So, um, 
It's just, it's very different than alcohol. It's a, it's more of a mind drug. I feel alcohol is sort of a, a deadening, numbing, more, maybe like more like a body drug. So people are unwinding and they're relaxing, but they're also able to think and maybe analyze or think clearly, pull back and see the macro, maybe make some changes in their lives. I think that, that cannabis really is more of a psychotherapeutic drug. It could actually be more helpful than alcohol, certainly in terms of insomnia or depression, anxiety. It could potentially be a treatment or a medicine. And, and Joanna, post publication of this article, is the feedback from the viewers changing at all? Well, the feedback from our readers is really that they're very pleased, that they recognize themselves. I mean, it's not a piece condoning it. It's a piece saying, look, this is going on. How do we feel about it? And a lot of people have written in saying, you know what, I do this too, and I'm really glad you've shone a light on it because I need to know other people are doing it. That's absolutely what I'm hearing. Yeah. And I think the, the behavior probably needs to be normalized. I think, you know, the countries that that are regulated, they've got less use, not more. All right, Dr. Joanna, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Marijuana activists are now targeting moms in their effort to see pot made legal. One group even encouraged pot smokers to come out to their moms with a pot themed Mother's Day card. The e card goes on to say, I want to share some news that might surprise you but should not upset you. I believe marijuana should be legal. Jessica Corey, co-founder of the women's marijuana movement, believes current marijuana laws are unjust, irrational, and detrimental. Ultimately, when children make mistakes, it shouldn't be cops who are playing parents. She had her two children in tow when she went to the state capitol to speak with Colorado lawmakers. Her group argues that pot is safer than booze. It's time for our government to wake up and realize that we have better opportunities and that after seven decades of a failed multi-billion dollar prohibition experiment, prohibition has failed. Her group handed out books titled Marijuana is Safer to female Colorado lawmakers like this one who was confronted while she was eating lunch. Supporters of creating state-run medical marijuana dispensaries say they have collected enough signatures to put the issue on the ballot. K2 Salem Bureau Chief Malika Johnson has more from Salem, where petitioners turned in more signatures today. Well, it looks like this is headed for the ballot. Supporters of medical marijuana dispensaries in Oregon have collected roughly 3,000 more signatures than they need to get this on the ballot, and they still have a month and a half to collect more signatures. Many medical marijuana advocates, including those who work at Salem's Medical Cannabis Resource Center, say the dispensaries are needed to help many first-time cardholders get a hold of their medicine so they don't have to turn to the black market, they say, or go without marijuana until they grow their own. So they feel like they're human beings, you know. It's like going to any pharmacy and getting your syringes, all the, your testing stuff for diabetes. The black market is going to rave about it because they're going to sell their product cheaper and people are not going to go to medical marijuana dispensaries to get it because they can buy it cheaper. The proposed ballot initiative would give the state oversight over the dispensaries while still allowing medical marijuana cardholders to grow their own pot. Also, the dispensaries would not cost taxpayers any money, according to supporters. They say they would be funded by fees and taxes paid for by dispensaries and marijuana producers. Several other states currently have medical marijuana dispensaries, including California, Rhode Island, and Colorado, so this has been done before. In Salem, Melika Johnson, K2 News. And right now, Oregon has over 36,000 people enrolled in the state's medical marijuana program. That number continues to grow. And we want to know what you think about all this. Would you support state regulated medical marijuana dispensaries in Oregon? To weigh in, just head to our website, katu.com. Our web poll is right there on our homepage. We'll have the results of that tonight at 6.30. And then we invite you to join us tonight at 11 for a K2 News special investigation. Welcome to... I-28 would regulate medical marijuana. Meanwhile, supporters are fundraising for the initiative, and they've spent the last month testing 18 different strands of cannabis to see which works best for certain medical conditions. Those results were unveiled today. Judges followed the M scale, judging strains on how it affected their brain and body, ranging from active to balanced to sedated. There was, there was some patients who said this was terrible, and then other patients said it was fantastic for, for several of them. And so I'm trying to get my mind around a process where there's such an extreme rate of, of response. And 
Glick says the winning sample isn't the important part, rather it's what strains help certain medical problems best, and he hopes to next do a trial with the top three strains on one particular medical condition. Breast cancer kills more than 41,000 American women every year. Researchers in the San Francisco lab are working to shrink that number, and they're doing it with an unusual weapon, marijuana, or at least a compound from it. And what we found is that the, um, this compound called cannabidiol was particularly effective at inhibiting aggressive breast cancers. First, scientists at California Pacific Medical Center discovered a key gene which enables breast cancer to spread. Then they tested the pot compound and realized it could actually inhibit that gene's destructive path and stop the spread of tumor cells and potentially do it without harming a patient. We know that this compound extracted from cannabis is non-toxic in patients because it has already been used for different kind of disease. The benefits may not stop there. Scientists say the cannabis compound may fight other aggressive cancers, including prostate cancer. The next step, animal studies, then clinical trials. So it may be several years before patients may benefit from a cannabis cancer fighter. I think it's a promising, um, a promising avenue in terms of the treatment for aggressive cancers, in which is really where we need treatments for. Marianne Favreau, NBC News. I'm Nadia Swaby with the Marijuana Policy Project. Welcome to Marijuana Two Minute Truths. We've received lots of emails from viewers who want to know about the long term health effects of marijuana, particularly what, if any, damage smoking marijuana causes to your lungs. Your lungs bring essential oxygen into your body, so of course, hurting your lungs is a terrible idea. Did you know, for instance, that nearly half a million Americans die every year from tobacco related lung disorders? If you've been paying attention, you probably did. But do you know how many people have ever died from marijuana-related cancer? Zero. No one. Marijuana has never been shown to cause cancer in humans, and the largest, most definitive epidemiological studies have failed to find an association between marijuana use and lung cancer, or any other kind of cancer, typically linked with smoking cigarettes. In 2006, Dr. Donald Tashkin of UCLA published what is perhaps the most famous of the marijuana lung cancer studies. The study of 2,200 people in Los Angeles found that even heavy marijuana smokers were no more likely to develop lung cancer than non-users, in contrast with tobacco users whose risk increases the more they smoke. Interestingly, this study was funded by the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Dr. Tashkin was later quoted in the Washington Post. We hypothesized that there would be a positive association between marijuana use and lung cancer, and that the association would be more positive with heavier use. What we found instead was no association at all, and even a suggestion of some protective effect. In fact, some scientific studies have shown a trend toward lower lung cancer rates among marijuana smokers than non-smokers, suggesting that marijuana's active components, cannabinoids, have anti-tumor properties. Take a look at these findings. Cannabinoids are selective anti-tumor compounds as they can kill tumor cells without affecting their non-transformed counterparts. A strong and statistically significant anti-tumor effect was observed, in particular for a highly malignant human breast carcinoma cell line, cannabidiol and cannabidiol-rich extract counteract tumor cell growth. This should not be taken to mean marijuana is good for you. No one is saying that. But how can marijuana be illegal when it has never been proven to have killed a single person through overdose or illness in 5,000 years of recorded history, while in the next hour, approximately 50 Americans will die from a tobacco-related illness? This has been your two-minute truth. Marijuana has not been shown to cause lung cancer, but cannabinoids may help fight cancer. I'm Nadia Swaby with the Marijuana Policy Project. Don't forget to email us your questions. Send them to social network at mpp.org with the subject line, Ask Nadia. Goodbye. We finally get to see the real light shed on the police and get innocent people out of prison. Mm -hmm.
Odessa police raid what they believe is a drug-infested house, only to find a shocking surprise. Good evening, everyone. They didn't find any drugs. Instead, they found a poster telling them they were on a reality show called Cop Busters. Eddie Garcia joins us now live in the newsroom with a story. Eddie, what is Cop Busters, and what are they trying to do? Well, Tatum, it's an online reality show that goes around the nation exposing what they say is police corruption. The reason they came to Odessa is because they were asked by a man who says his daughter is falsely imprisoned. Video cameras, plants masquerading as drugs, and a message are what police found while serving a search warrant today. The best equipment known to man is what cop busters has, and we're going to continue going across America busting these cops. The reality show team out of Austin has been setting up the fake drug den for six months, going through painstaking methods to keep it a secret. We had to use encrypted emails. We had to use Walmart blow-up cell phones in case our phones were tapped. But why all the trouble? Get Yolanda Madden out of prison. In 2005, Odessa woman Yolanda Madden was convicted of possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute. Now, she's serving a seven-year prison sentence. I can prove absolutely without a doubt she's innocent. Her father says he's been trying to get a court to retry the case since the conviction. We had a witness that planted the drugs. He testified in court that he planted the drugs. Cop Buster says the show exists to help fix the system. What do you say to the skeptics who might say this is a publicity stunt? Watch our TV show, Cop Busters, and see the proof to prove they've got crooked cops here. You may be interested to know that Cooper himself is a former police officer here locally. Odessa police say that this matter is still under investigation, and at this point, they're looking to see if any laws were broken. We will continue to investigate the Yolanda Madden case and bring you any developments as they come around. Live in the newsroom, Eddie Garcia, CBS 7 News. A councilman from Dearborn, Michigan, is outraged over a 911 call. He wants to know why no charges have been filed against a police officer who admits to confiscating marijuana from suspects and then baking it in brownies. And once he and his wife were full and high, they thought they'd overdosed and called 911. I think I'm having an overdose of so is my wife. Overdose of what? Marijuana. I don't know if it had something in it. Can you please send rescue? Did you guys have fever or anything? No, I'm just... I think we're dying. Oh, how much did you guys have? I, I don't know. We made brownies, and I think we're dead. Time is going by really, 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 really slow. <laughs> well, instead of being charged... <laughs> Prilla. <laughs> Sorry. Instead of being charged, the police department let the officer resign. His wife was not charged either. So far, police officials have not commented on the case. Now, how do you follow a story like that? <laughs> well, talk about switching, switching gears. Time is going by really, really slow. Say goodbye to 39-cent postage stamps. Bye-bye. Starting Monday, stamp prices jump to 2 cents to 41 cents. Postal officials say any mail that won't be picked up until Monday should have higher postage on them. You can also buy forever stamps that remain valid. Regardless of time going by, those future increases. Sorry, I just had to You know, you warned us that you snorted when you thought things were fine. That, yeah, boy. You just still caught me off guard, bro. I'm sorry. Been known to man the best rope you'll ever hold. Well, the pioneers covered up the wagon trains with the canvas made of him. And Washington and Jefferson grew it on their farms, said to make the most of it. The first stars and stripes were sewn on him, the first constitution, too. It's around the world for food, fiber, oil, medicine, and fuel. But if we press it seeds, we won't have no need for any other oil. We can make paints and inks, we'll run our car, we'll go back next season, it'll fix. So the most nutritious seed we can put in our mouth with omega-6 and 3. We can feed the world with the tree of life and live sustainably. But if we cut down all the trees, we won't have nowhere to breathe. Grow fields of hemp instead. We can make our paper, build a house from it. If the God has plant grown wild and free, living the way that we ought to be. Gonna leave my children a better world than my ancestors. 
ancestors left me. on earth helps cancer and AIDS patients eat their food helps those with depression overcome the blues glaucoma epilepsy nausea insomnia stress neurosis psychosis pain pms all the studies have been done and all the doctors agree but they can't make money off this plant you see because it's free it grows from the seed wild and free like we ought to be you know the future is growing in our own backyards but if we cut down all This one single plant can bring us back almost 10,000 years in history To the Shiva Puranas, the Jesus, the Christ, to the Buddha, the pagans, the goddess, the light To commune with all the animals, commune with all the trees To realize the goddess seek is inside me Is the birth is a mother, we gotta take care of the earth The earth is the mother that gives life birth And we can heal our relations with a single green plant We can start right now But if we cut down all the trees We won't have nowhere to breathe Grow fields of pamphlets instead 